Now, I'd like to just review some of our recently posted content uh, from last week's presentation and more. Uh, we had a discussion on rolling a deep in the money covered call. The CCXI stock uh, gapped up 96%, uh, I believe, from 18 to 36, went up to 40. I didn't see what it did in the last three days. Um, so we had that discussion last week of how to evaluate rolling a covered call now that it's so deep in the money and other ideas. I also had a question on rolling down a deep in the money naked or cash secured put where the stock fell below the put strike price and what are some of the things we might consider to roll or adjust that position at that time. We had a presentation reviewing the tools that one could use to identify bear call credit spreads and bull put credit spreads. And then a discussion on is it better to enter a covered call or cash secured put position and talked about the parity of those two trades. We had a follow up to looking for a bull put credit spread on high IV positions and increasing implied volatility. We showed a comparison of how the search we created the week before would have performed uh, over a two or three month period. Uh, compared to a different screen using bull put credit spreads. I talked a little bit about married puts. Should we bulletproof with an income method or liquidate the position? Discuss some of the features of the portfolio tool. There is a new webinar that's created that's up there now. It's based on a question from Gustavo, who had an idea about repairing a stock that's down about 35% with a short strangle. And we took a look at his proposed plan and we compared it to some other rollout opportunities as well. Since this was an easier way to do a video for a personal discussion along those lines for Gustavo, it is posted on YouTube right now, but it's unlisted. I want to get Gustavo's approval uh, before I make that presentation public as well. And this is related to one question that came in via email earlier today from Anthony or Tony. And he had asked, what are good income strategies to use during earnings season to capture the benefit of increase in option premium? Well, selling into positions, whether you're thinking about short strangles, maybe an iron condor, even though you're 8, 10 percent, 9 percent out of the money with an upcoming earnings, trying to take advantage of that increased implied volatility. A lot of times one of those positions goes against you. It has that sudden 12, 15, 20 percent movement one direction or the other from massive unexpected earnings. It wipes out dozens of previous trades in that aspect, even with the increased implied volatility. We already have some presentations that discuss this, and I sent those to him via email. Uh, strategies for earnings, protecting a stock for earnings and more. Uh, a follow-up to that, it was a YouTube special, direct answers from the comments of that first presentation. A little bit about straddles for earnings, there's a follow-up to that one too. Uh, our put ratio backspreads, the best trade for earnings. We delved into that a couple of years ago. And our calendar or diagonal spreads, good trade around earnings. There's also some discussions on entering collar trades around earnings and when is the best time to open a collar for an earnings position. Well, that's all available now in an updated playlist on the Power Options YouTube channel. The new one is just called Earnings Discussions. These videos here, plus several others, a total of eight videos right now are right included in there. Always a good idea to start off with that first one, strategies for earnings, protecting stock for earnings and more, and then going into the follow-up discussion that YouTube special is the best place to start. We might spend some time today reviewing that and looking at that again. Um, but in this case, I felt it was easier since we already had all of the topics that we've covered, mainly for earnings, income discussions, buying straddles, buying strangles around earnings. We just put that together in one full playlist. You guys can check that out later on after today's presentation. If you have a similar question to Anthony about what are good strategies to use during earnings season or a stock that has earnings coming up. All right. Well, all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's navigate over to the Power Options suite of tools. We, of course, are going to use the Power Options suite of tools to illustrate the answers to our questions uh, that come in during the presentation. As I mentioned, please feel free to send us your questions at any time. All right. Wow. I did get lucky. Um, <laughs> I was in a uh, married put position with Ally Financial. Um, actually, no, it didn't. It would have worked out okay. Anyway, I had uh, the 55 call for October sold against it. It bulletproofed the Ally Financial position. So I have no risk on the married put trade, which is out to January after that call expired or if that call expired. But I ended up buying it back today at eight cents. And uh, the reason why is that yesterday was at 52.40 or 52.50, and I could have simply bought it back for five cents and not worried about it. Today, at one point, it was up to 55.28, I think was the high I saw it. 
But when I checked around one o'clock, two o'clock, I believe it was, the stock was right around 54.30, 54.50 and still moving up. It was eight cents to buy to close the 55 call. So I bought it back around that time at 2.30 maybe. I can't remember. Ah, got lucky on that one. Now it did end below 55, but there's no risk in keeping it above there because I want to keep the stock because earnings are coming out next week and I have a no risk position, stock plus put combination all the way out to January. So if earnings are strong, as they have been for most of the banks this week, then that could be benefit to me to the upside and I want to stay in the trade. And if the stock falls, well, I have a guaranteed profit on the position and I can choose to adjust the put option as well if needs be, if the fall is really big and keep earning income against it. Following the rules in the blueprint, there are full course for the married put positions and the 12 different income methods uh, <clears throat> that we use to lower the initial risk bulletproof the trade going into earnings so we have no risk or just bulletproof at any time we possibly can as well so i didn't want to watch it that was the main thing you hear us talk a lot before on positions about is should we close a position before expiration you know if we have 80 percent of the profit or 70 percent of the profit should we close it early to avoid assignment or avoid it going against us and in this case i just wanted to close it sold the call for 91 cents about 35 days ago bought it back for eight cents today worked out well for me because i didn't want to have to watch this position for the rest of the day and try to track it and at one point it would have scared me if i let it go and it went up to 55 25 or 55 30 would have had to buy it back for 30 35 cents taking away a third of the profit that i had hoped for on that position as well all right now Let's see if we have any questions that come in. And as always, I want to, you can just send your questions in at any time using that question pod. Uh, Greg says, hi, Mike. It's uh, great to be here. Uh, I needed to close a position in the portfolio, and I couldn't see how to do it. Uh, what is your position? Oh, you needed to close a leg of a collar spread similar to what I'm talking about. Okay, great. So let's go to the portfolio tools where we track our positions, whether they're just a long call or a long put, or here's that CCXI position we were talking about. Okay, it came back down to earth to 3447. As I mentioned, it was as high as 40. And the situation we covered in that one archive webinar was the October 15th, 15 strike call as the stock had moved up that 96% there. In any case, let's go to radioactive trading. Hopefully I have a collar open. Okay, I don't. So let's take this one. We're going to add an option like so here we're tracking the married put this isn't the actual price of the position that we have in the fusion portfolio for radioactive traders on ally but i'm going to add in that sold call so first we just put in that we're going to add an option leg we're going to sell today's 55 strike call and this was done back in september right around expiration or just after it and we received 91 cents i believe was the initial profit and the stock was about 53.80, I think. Okay, so we're going to sell a call for 91 cents back on September 20th. It wasn't September 20th. It was before that because remember, September 20th was that day of the big drop that we had uh, with the uh, ever grand China instance and everything along those lines. All right, so here we are. And similar to greg's position i've got a collar position with either a longer term put or maybe your put was the same expiration date as your call was but to close just the leg of the position we're going to click on the edit more information button next to the trade and we're going to go to position actions and here we can look at the position analysis to evaluate rollout opportunities close the entire position which is maybe where you got stuck greg you don't want to do that you just want to close the individual leg or of course if you rolled it if i had rolled this uh, 55 call for october 15th out to the 55 call for november as the price is increased i would choose to roll leg but we can just go to close position no well, that's not what i wanted to do <laughs> we just wanted to close the leg greg my apologies let's go back let's do that correctly mike all right, we're going to close the leg. So click on the actual call, select close leg, and I close this for eight cents sometime this afternoon around 2, 2.30. And everything looks right there. Let's just go ahead and submit the trade. And now we're back to just a married put on Ally, and my cost basis, my effective cost per share, will reflect the profit or loss that I had when making 
that adjustment in that case. So it was originally around with that made about 83 cents. So this was somewhere around 4234, I think it was the effective cost per share on the position. We've now lowered it down to 4151. Where is the record of that trade now in the portfolio? Well, now that we've closed it, the portfolio's view here under the portfolio only shows us our open positions. When I close the positions, I can see it in the transactions view or in the analysis by symbol or analysis by position. I like to use analysis by symbol. So there's the ally position. Again, this isn't the actual trade. This is just one for our webinars, uh, a webinar account portfolio, but it is tracking the married puts here. We have a berry position open. It's a little bit different. Just opened a new position for the Fusion subscribers in ESI. And Ernie just opened one in DT as well. But in any case, here's that call, the October 15th, 55 call. Highlighted in red are the legs of this position that I still have open. And then these ones here with no highlight behind them, we sold it for 91 cents, bought it back today for $8. So we profited $83 on that one, made $48 on a previous call that we sold. This is September 55. There have been other adjustments on this trade uh, since then as well. Okay, Greg, so that's how you do it. When you're in the main portfolio view, tracking your positions, just use the edit more information button next to the leg that you want to close the specific leg or if you want to roll it, and that'll be there. You just click next to the stock position on any kind of linked position, a covered call, married put, or a collar. You'll close, you can close the leg, but that's just going to be related to the stock. That's not what you want to do, and you don't want to close the entire position. You just want to use one leg at a time, uh, and that's how that's set up for you there in the portfolio.